Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're looking at the Tuya Knives Bruiser. <sighs> Alright guys, Tuya Knives is a rather new knife company. They're another uh, Chinese knife company that's doing ODM, OEM work that has decided to throw off a good portion of that and move into, and from what their rep tells me, move into fully making their own knives. They're not doing what most of the other companies are doing and still doing OEM, ODM work on the side. They're explicitly to market this brand, or working explicitly to market this brand to you knives. And this, as far as I know, is their first D2 and G10 model. Now, we've seen D2 and G10 before. We've seen it with Best Tech. We've seen it with Wii. And... It's a model that works really well. People really like it. And let's see how the Bruiser stacks up. I'm getting a look at the outside. We've got more complex milling. Now, it's not as complex as it may look. We've still got some somewhat grippy edges, which I actually like. Don't, don't take that as a negative. I like what they've done here. But it's more complex milling than we're getting on most of the best tech knives. Uh, and it's also, I mean, get a good look at that. Nice and centered. They polished up the stainless steel liners. You get a look down the back. We've got a nice G10 backspacer with some jumps on it that are eh, mostly useless. But the, it's nice to have them there. They look good. And we've got a nice big lanyard hole and a deep carry pocket clip. Now... We do have a pivot that you guys have seen before. And I know, I've heard it already. Uh, no, it's not a best tech pivot. Here's the thing. You see that pivot? Go over to knifekits.com. I almost guarantee you that you can order that pivot directly off knifekits.com right now. So what does that mean? It means that that is a commonly used pivot. And it's no different than some of the other pivots that we have seen some of these manufacturers use. And they're young companies. They'll catch their stride. Uh, you've seen this with Best Tech. Uh, Best Tech is starting to get uh, better about pivots. From what the U.S. Rep for Tuya tells me, uh, their hardware is getting better all the time. So where are we on measurements? Because that's always important. This is a big one. It's a bruiser. We've got a closed length of 5 inches, a handle thickness of 0.58, and an overall length of 8.5 inches, so it's a big one, and a blade length of 3.51, and uh, a weight of 4.94 ounces. So it's, uh, you know, it's right there in its weight class and size class. It's right at the, what I would consider the upper edges, but... It carries really, really well. Looks really, really good. Get another close look at that guy. They've done some really nice milling there. And they've made it grippy without making it awful. Which is always a great thing. We've got good looking hardware. We'll get a look at that deeper here in a minute. Let's get the blade out here. And we will do some size comparison. And this is one that we can actually directly compare to our big knives, if I can find them. Here we go. There is our Buck 110. And as you can see, we're very close in size to the Buck 110. And we've got a Rat Model 1. Same thing. Very close in size to the Rat Model 1. In fact, almost right in line with the Rat Model 1. And it weighs a tick less than a rat. And then let's get a Delica out here. There you go. Bigger than the Delica, of course. And I do want to lay it against uh, some of its more direct... I guess this is direct competition right here, isn't it? But uh, against two of its other more direct competitors. We've got... There is a Wii 617 uh, from the first production run of Wii 617s. And a Best Tech Paladin. You know, all of them... From China, all of them, G10 and D2. Uh, each one of them doing their own thing. And it's kind of a, well, it's a beautiful thing. You know, Wii's definitely the upper end of things with titanium hardware, titanium clips, 
better quality, I shouldn't say better quality, stiffer, thicker, thinner layer G10, uh, unbelievable actions. Uh, Best Tech is more in line with your Tuya knife, uh, similar quality G10. I don't know if the action, the actions on these two are both remarkably good. Uh, hmm, love that. Yeah, let's get a look at the blade since we've got it out here. I'll wipe her off and we'll get to it. And we have a clip point, a classic clip point. We've got that belt finish on that flat grind that I like a lot. We've got a nice swedge up. See, you can all call Miri. There I am. How you doing, guys? And all uh, really nice up there across the swedge. And we're all black coated back in here. Now, I'm not taking this knife apart. It... Uh, We'll talk about that here in a minute. So, anyhow, blade length, 3.5, 3.45 edge, 0.15 for stock thickness. A little thinner than what we uses, slightly thicker than what we generally get with Best Tech. So, you know, that's personal preference right there. Liners are all polished up, and if you can see down in there, I think you can. They are milled for your pleasure. Uh, or lightness, whatever you'd like to say. Got a little jimping up here. Uh, blade overall is a beautiful thing, and I love what they've done right here. We'll talk about that more in ergonomics, but that is just a brilliant little move right there. And for now, we're going to go into our pause and read card, and I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, mechanically, what we get is ceramic ball bearings, ceramic detent, uh, very good lockup, and just an unbelievably smooth action for a $45 knife. Uh, and I, here's a little tip and a hint and something that you need to be aware of. If you have any inclination to get any of these to your knives, get on it. I'm going to link the website below in the description, but I guarantee you that the prices on these two knives will go up. They have been running for the past year as an introductory and get out to the community and show what they could do, but they're not going to be able to run on such thin profit margins for long because this knife is $44.99. Uh, the best tech knife that we've looked at, we've got a pallet in here. Here's a Beluga. These knives are $52. You know, the Wii knife with the titanium and all the other stuff is uh, 100 bucks. Here's the thing. They've got to make some money on these knives to bring you more cool stuff. So I'm going to guess that this knife is going to be up in the $50 range in the next few weeks or months. It just has to. They're doing too good a job and uh, knowing what those production costs and marketing costs look like, uh, not from Tuya Knives, but from other uh, knife companies that I deal with, uh, they just can't maintain what they're doing here at $44.99. So I would expect to see them up around 50 or so bucks sometime soon. And they'll still be well worth it because while we're talking about all this stuff, we need to get our driver out here. And I'll try to get the... Yeah, I got the Weehaw this time. There are some issues. That pivot is a P T6 and it's shallow. Not good. Two years aware of it. They're taking care of it on uh, future models. Screws here. Also, yeah, they're not bad but I've talked to the Tuya rep, and they're upgrading the screws as well. Uh, should be some harder screws and some better made screws on future models. Uh, and, you know, it only makes sense. If you're going to move into that $50 to $60 range, or maybe even a little more, you've got to bring the goods to get there, right? Well, Tuya knows that, and they are. And that right there is why we're not taking that knife apart, because... Uh, I will end up stripping that out 
and I'm not going to. This was on loan from uh, Staza23 and the Tuya rep, and I do not want to bust up their knife and cause them a customer service incident, you know, right away. And uh, they're aware of that, like I said, and they're fixing it. Now, I guess we need to get it in the pocket, don't we? There's more I want to say, but getting it in the pocket is probably more important at this point. And uh, there we go. And we've got the deep carry clip. The knife gets down there deep in the pocket. The back side of the knife is put together pretty well to get your hand down in there. Very, in fact, very well. Uh, I like what they've done there. And ergonomically, uh, Tuya is knocking it out of the park in this uh, class of knife. Uh, uh, price class especially. What have they done? Well, you guys tell me. We, I'm always talking about this, but you guys always know what I'm going to say. They went really simple with the handle design. Got a little bit of drop right here, and it's not a drop that bothers my hand any at all in any grip. It actually might make it a little better. You got good light switch ergonomics on the flipper tab. You can push button it, but it's really meant to be light switched. And it's another one of those where if you break the detent, it's just going to fire. That's all there is to it. Uh, <coughs> best thing they've done here, though, you got this grip, which feels really good. They got their jimping a little for, far back. It needs to be a little far, further forward on the knife, but it'll work. Now, this right here, though, is super awesome. They have got a sharpening choil where they've done a pretty good job on the edge termination. It's not perfect by any means, but, you know, you could do a really... Well, they put black on the bottom of it, so I guess you can't do a really good job with the Dremel. But, say, if this blade didn't have the black on there, 15 minutes with the Dremel, and we'd have a perfect uh, choil there, and it would be beautiful. Now, they are aware of that. They're working on it. I've said that a lot in this review. But uh, talking to the Tuya rep really made me feel a lot better about Tuya knives. That's why we're looking at them on the channel. Anyhow, you got the thing open, and this right here, this shape, is beautiful. Now, look where my finger rides. I've got room. Not a lot, but I've got room, and I've got a good hold on the knife to get in there and do some hard stuff with that forward finger choil. I just love the shape they've given it. It gives you that protection if you need to take down that awful, awful box that was hiding in the alley on your way home and you need to slice some cardboard to make it safely home. And they've given you the opportunity to choke up on the knife in what I consider a pretty safe manner for slightly heavier work than most forward finger choils. So that shape right there that they've used is beautiful. I don't really understand these two little milled out spots on the side of the flipper tab, but you know, they save a little weight and they look cool, so why not? Now, there is an issue here, and that's why that sharpening choil needs to be just a forward finger choil slash sharpening choil needs to be a smidge longer. Another millimeter or two, and you wouldn't be able to touch that blade at all. The way it is right now, and it's really, really hard to see, I can run my finger across there and I can touch the point at the heel of that blade. Now, I've carried the knife. It's not going to bite you. It's just something that is there. And if they had properly executed this forward finger choil slash sharpening choil, it would not be an issue at all. So, guys, whew. my opinions here. Okay, at $44.99, uh, here's how I would treat the bruiser. I would buy probably four of them. And I would treat them as the best dead gum beater knife I ever owned. Why? Because the actions are great. The ergonomics are just amazing for that price point. Uh, all false shutty and stuff. They've got a deep carry pocket clip. It's a nice big knife to use in that beater situation. And uh, this makes some of you hurt, but this is how I would treat them. I would buy three or four of them. I would use them like that. Yeah, I'd keep them sharp. Yeah, I'd take care of them. 
but they would definitely be the beater knives. Why would they be the beater knives? Well, because of that T6, that little short T6 pivot, because that's gonna frustrate me whenever it comes time to work on it, but I like the knife so much that I would give the $45 to have a couple of them. Uh, I guess that'd be what, 90 some dollars to have a couple of them just to beat around on. Uh, they, every one of them I've seen or heard talked about centers up well, runs well. So I'm not gonna worry about that pivot too much. Uh, if you do end up needing to get one of these pivots out or thinking you have to, this is a pivot to use some heat on because it is uh, Loctited down in there. That's something else to you is changing. They will no longer be uh, using the style of Loctite that they're using uh, or they used on this one. So that's great. They're going to have T8s in the pivots. That's what I understand for future knives. So the future knives are going to be worth more, will probably cost a little more, and uh, should address the majority of the things that I've complained about. However, this bruiser right here, like I said, I would buy two or three of them. I would use the heck out of it until I had a problem with the pivot or I broke it, which for some of the things I do, I'd probably break it before I had a problem with the pivot. And whenever I broke it, it'd just be all right, whatever, and pick up another one out of the box and keep going. I like it that much as far as the way it's shaped, that forward finger choil, that blade shape, that nice flat grind out of D2, uh, the swedging and the clip point. Uh, and just the way the thing carries, it carries very well. That pocket clip is done well. It'll fit in just about anything. So, is it a stellar knife as it sets? No, it isn't. But for $44.99, I'd buy one. Anyhow, guys, if you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the Patreon and be sure to watch the Apex News every week and in the interim visit the apexnews.com that's the home of the show notes for the apex news weekly show and any other things that uh, we come up with during the week that are interesting hopefully for you have a great day guys and i'll see you next time